I'm pleased to welcome uh, Amit Singh, spent 20 years at Oracle, now at Google. He's responsible through Google Enterprise in seeing the ways in which the tools that have become so common and well known from grades one through all the way can be used productively in a business environment. I'm also given to understand that he is a huge Yankees fan. So Amit Singh, please come on up and welcome. Jonathan, you're on fire. And no, I'm not a Yankees fan, I'm a Red Sox fan. He just said that, it pissed me off. Welcome to all of you, welcome to Google. We're excited you're here. Uh, this is gonna be a great day. For those of you watching on the live stream and on all remote locations, a special welcome to you as well. Uh, we have an exciting day planned. Uh, you'll, you'll hear from industry luminaries, you'll hear from Googlers, you'll hear from our customers, and hopefully you'll experience some magic moments. And uh, we're really, we've been working hard at putting this event together. Um, you know, um, technology is really impacting us in our personal lives and increasingly in our business lives. And the trends that you see um, oops, of mobile, social, and cloud are changing the way we work. How many of you in the audience have more than one mobile device? Come on, fess up. Oh boy. For those of you who can't see it, it's virtually everyone. It's changing the way we consume information. As uh, all of you know, there's more mobile devices sold than PCs this year. Um, interesting stat for you, we did a study. Searches that start in mobile, 50% of the time result in some sort of action. Very different than the desktop search that we have. 400 million mobile YouTube hits every day. It's changing the way certain industries operate. Consumers are taking their mobile devices to retail, doing comp comparison shopping, finding the cheapest price for that particular product, and either driving to that location or ordering it right on their phones. This morning, I used mobile social cloud. Woke up, checked my email on my, on my tablet, did some tweets, connected with my friends across the world. It's revolutionizing personal computing. To understand how social is working, just watch your kids, certainly my kids. You just can't get them off this stuff. My son is constantly looking for his updates of what their friends are saying. But underlying that trend is something really deep about how humans connect, collaborate, share. Our use of social technology inside of Google has shown uh, you know, a, a remarkable way of how we find the experts. We connect for information, how we video conference, where we collaborate. It's really changing the culture of the company in a very deep way. Gartner suggested that 20% of people will replace email with new social tools. And it's really just starting in the enterprise context. And then the cloud. Oh, the cloud. It's a misused term by many. Now, we are born in the cloud, right? We live in the cloud. Google uh, is a company that has uh, really been part of that revolution. And this whole idea of sharing is the core tenet of the cloud. And the idea of, of taking infrastructure and services and applications and then just consuming them as a service instead of owning them. Not running your data centers, but running your businesses. Expecting the outcome not being responsible for all the messy software and hardware and patches, et cetera. It's a very, very powerful idea. It's a really powerful idea. And the cloud allows you to do things that weren't possible in the last generation of technology. Things like translation. Things like speech recognition. That you just can't do without the computing capacity of the cloud. And this is happening, and it's actually accelerating. The trend in the cloud is ex accelerating. I'll share with you some of the business results we've had so far this year. Um, services like email and collaboration and video conferencing, and yes, customers, and, um, and even your human resource uh, uh, management are moving to the cloud, and that trend is really accelerated. You know, yesterday, uh, Thomas Friedman wrote a great article uh, in the New York Times. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. It described this new product called Akash, which is a $30 Android tablet. 
And the purpose of this device is, to, is really for the, the young school kids in remote geographies across the villages of India. And this device, it's, uh, it, it is going to take the power of the cloud and all the, the great education material that uh, educators are going to sort of create for this, this service and deliver it to all these students that have no access to education for $30. And it promises to completely revolutionize. And he wrote, and, in, and I quote here, the power of the mobile social cloud creates non-linear innovation. So think about that for a second, non-linear. These trends are powerful enough by themselves. But together, together the three trends really create non-linear innovation. And that's what, what we are trying to do at Google trying to bring the power of the mobile social cloud to you, both as consumers as well as businesses. Let's look at some of the impact this has had by industries, because it's created some winners and losers. You know, Amazon um, revolutionized book retailing originally, if you guys remember. They built their entire business in the cloud, obviously had their own distribution facilities. And, uh, but they translated that, you know, not, not only did they deliver a great books to you in a timely manner, but they use their social recommendations engine to help you surface great content, right? From there, they moved on to uh, not just do books, but they moved into other categories. From those other categories, they built an online web services business, which is now several billion dollars. From there, they moved into book readers, the Kindle. All my kids now consume all their books for the, on the Kindle, and now they have the hottest device in the consumer space, the Kindle Fire, based on Android, for less than $200. During that time, books overtook, uh, e-books overtook paperbacks for the first time this year. There were more e-books sold than paperbacks. And my favorite store, Borders, was a casualty of this innovation. They could not keep up. They didn't understand the trend. They couldn't understand the art of what was possible with this technology. Netflix, in spite of some of their recent business challenges, has done the same thing in media. I and mean, if you think about it, um, I, I go back home every day. Instead of turning on the television, I put on, stream great content from Netflix. And they built it right on the internet business platform and on, deliver those services on any device. Right? Uh, moving from a DVD rental business to a media company, bypassing Comcast, to be the largest subscription base of video on demand. They now consume 25% of the internet content. And then Groupon. Solve the problem of local inventory of products and services, connecting that with consumers on their mobile devices. And the way a Groupon works, if you haven't used it, it uses the social network. So the deal goes live only if a certain number of people accept it. They connected all those three trends and technologies to build a brand new company in three years, which is now valued at $12 billion. Till recently, they owned virtually no infrastructure. They built all of this on Amazon. So great things are possible in industries. Many, many amazing innovations are occurring, and I think it's an opportunity for us who are in the IT business to learn from that and take advantage of that, bring that innovation to our own businesses. Now, our mission as the Google Enterprise team is to bring the mobile social cloud to you to use in your businesses. And we're doing it with products that are designed for teams and built for the web. What's different about, about Google other than uh, the fact that we sit right in the juncture of consumer and enterprise technology, is the fact that teamwork and designing for teams, sharing and collaboration is inherently part of the products that we build. That's what we do. That's intuitively who we are. We don't worry so much about individual productivity in a PC one-to-one -one environment. We are building our products for teams. And the second thing is we don't assume that we don't assume that your pro we assume your products will work anywhere, on the web, on any device. That's fundamentally a core tenet of our design principles. 
And we do that by bringing all of the Google products to you in an enterprise context. And you'll hear a lot about these today. You'll hear about Chromebooks that are really changing the face of education, starting in the US. A new experience, a much easier, much more interesting web experience for you to replace your desktops. Android, the latest version of Android, has very specific enterprise capabilities like encryption, security, uh, APIs, and manageability built right in the foundation of, of, uh, of Android. Google's platform services like Google App Engine, storage, and our sophisticated APIs on which you can build incredibly scalable and reliable applications. Of course, the largest and fastest growing product that we have is Google Apps. I'll talk some more about it. Uh, where you can use Gmail for businesses, host, you know, have your intranets with Google Sites, and share easily with your colleagues all across the world with Google Docs. And most recently, we've enabled Google Plus as a service as part of the Google Apps family, where you can share, connect, collaborate with your colleagues, not just on the web, but also on, on video conferences. It's been one of the most popular features of Google Plus. Our geo products like Google Maps and Google Earth, where you can really visualize your data. You can make da uh, visualization of data a key part of, of your strategy inside your company. And finally, bring the power of Google search to your enterprise. Make it really simple for people to find information. Our goal is to bring all of these products, connect them with deep enterprise features and capabilities for you, and bring them in, in what we call is our own version of the 999 plan. <laughs> Those of you who have been following the US uh, Republican primary, we have our own version. And it's got three nines. The first nine, we surround these products. In, in this case, I'm taking Google Apps as an example. With the first thing, the first nine is an SLA. 99.9% .9 guaranteed SLA for Google Apps. And oh, by the way, uh, the most re recent metrics are we are 99.99, which means uh, less than 43 minutes of unavailable uh, for the products through the, through the year, which is something which is absolutely astounding. If you guys run large-scale large corporate networks, uh, this is really best-in-class capability that we bring to you. The second nine, support. And this is the first time we're sharing this information for our friends in the press. We survey you on, a, on how good we are doing as a support offering. And for all the enterprise in the room, more than 90% have a, a very high positive CSAT satisfaction with our support. So thank you for that. And the last nine, renewals. 90% of you have enjoyed our services, our products, love what we do, and renew with us year after year. And we, the promise we've made, we'll make these products better every year. We'll deliver a high value of service. And if you don't like these services, we are very committed to data liberation. We'll it's as easy as it is to come in, into Google. That's how easy we'll make it to get out, that, so that there's no lock-in. Now, we know how seriously you take these products. They've become an integral part of how you run your businesses, and these are mission-critical services. So I'm really excited to delight uh, really excited to announce, I'm delighted to announce, that we now offer 24 by 7 support on every issue for every business customer. We've worked incredibly hard for this service. All our systems and all the investments that we've made have lead, led up to it. We've always had great service, but now you can call us anytime. Try it out. Uh, just to give you a sense, uh, these great products and the customers, many of them represented in the room, have really helped us accelerate the business in the cloud. Now, 4 million businesses and 5,000 every day are moving to Google Apps. It's absolutely astounding. 62 of the top 100 universities in the US have moved to Google Apps. Google Earth has more than 1 billion downloads. Being, becoming the second largest downloaded app, um, the first one being Linux. And Google App Engine applications have two billion page views every day. This is now a developer community of 150,000 developers globally building their applications on Google App Engine. Now, many of you are wondering, I hope, what the ticker behind me is here, 48. 
Let's see, it goes 49. Yes, I have more time. These are the number of customers who've converted to Google Apps since I started my talk. Isn't that cool? Let's see it, watch it move to 50. Yay, 50. Um, you know, at Web 2.0, Steve Ballmer made uh, some very interesting comments about how Microsoft was winning, winning, winning against Google 98% of the time. And so that really piqued our curiosity. We said, let's, you know, we're all about the numbers, so let's say, let's run the numbers. So we asked the engineers to go run the algorithms to say, because we asked customers who, what, what they're moving from. And guess what they found? Thousands of customers, thousands every day, are turning off their Microsoft servers and converting to Google Apps. I think we're doing a little bit of winning ourselves. All right, um, now let's, let's introduce you to a few of these customers. Now who are these? Four million businesses, are these all small customers? And I'll tell you, all small customers, you should just let us manage your data centers, let us manage your services and move right to the cloud. It's just the view is much better from here. But customers of all industries, of all shapes and sizes, are really moving to the cloud. Retailers like Ahold, Roberto Cavalli, represented here, are moving to the cloud. High-tech companies like Genentech and Avago are moving to the cloud. Airlines like Land Chile, Virgin Americas are moving to the cloud. Me uh, media companies like the Telegraph Group, McClatchy, the largest group of, uh, of newspapers, is moving to the cloud. Um, Fortune 500 companies like Mead West Waco and R. Donnelly are moving to the cloud. Government institutions like Pittsburgh, uh, the city of Pittsburgh, the GSA, the state of Wyoming are moving to the cloud. It is really a movement that, whose time has come, and we're seeing absolute great ad adoption about these technologies. And it gives me great pleasure welcoming our newest customers we're announcing for the first time. Burberry, moving 10,000 people to the cloud. Perry Ellis, Casio, SoftBank, the, large, the third, second largest telco in Japan. Trinity Mirror, Museum of Modern Arts, and two additional um, companies in the Fortune 500 Goodyear and Guardian have joined us in the cloud. Please give, us a round, give them a round of applause of having the courage to join us. Now, it's interesting when I talk to customers who've moved, and Christine and I were having a conversation about this, uh, you'll hear from her later, is it's not just about cost. I know you will, you will save money. No question, it's cheaper. And the level of service is better. But that's just not enough. There is more in the cloud. You can get more focused. You can increase your speed, your, you know, your, uh, the way you, the, the speed of innovation in your company. You can, you can become green in the cloud. So here's some examples of companies. Synram. Move 14 out of their 16 exchange engineers to much more higher priority projects while saving a million dollars. Intercontinental hotel groups, the large, largest hotel chain in the world, by the way, is moved to the cloud. And not only do they save cost, but they speed up their budgeting process by using Google spreadsheets. In fact, that reminds me of a story where uh, we have a client in, in Europe, I won't name them, large client, start using Google spreadsheets to manage their supply chain. And essentially put in their inventory position and invited their tier one, tier two um, supply chain uh, partners to come in and share their inventory position. So there was much you know, clear visibility on where they were, who, where everybody was in the inventory. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. You can see the spreadsheet uh, and everybody's in the spreadsheet together because it's just on the web. You can collaborate really effectively on the web using Google Spreadsheets. Through that process, they drove 90 million euros worth of inventory off their supply chain annually. That's the power of what you can do with this kind of technology. Johnson Diversity saved 73 metric tons of carbon dioxide by moving to the cloud and turning off their servers. The common thread across a lot of these um, customer stories 
is, um, and I get, I, I speak a lot in front of audiences, you know, about the culture of Google and, you know, what is the spirit behind uh, how we develop products. And you'll hear a lot about this from Dave. Is, is leadership. Is the leadership to think differently? The leadership to try new ideas, to experiment? To say no to control and, more, and say yes to empowerment? It's okay to let users do what they naturally do? To explore things, to, to try new ideas? And that's the spirit of what we're trying to bring to you today. Um, hopefully, with the, the set of speakers that are here and the experiences that you'll have, will open up the possibilities in your mind of what you can do with the social mobile cloud and how you can bring it to your businesses and create great value for your companies. So thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>